Hello folks, welcome back to another video. Uh, so in this example here, I have a drum loop and you probably had this problem before that you need to edit it and bring in some details, uh, small little chops, small little glitches, repeat repetitions and so on to keep it interesting over time, right? So and it's a really tedious talk for me. Some people really enjoy this and go in and edit this for hours. Um, I find it very boring. <laughs> So I try to utilize Bitwig and the chain for this to make it more interesting. And I want to show you some tips and tricks for this, um, how you can do that. So we have this drum loop here. It's already a bit, yeah, shopped up. So it's already, you know, bringing in some action with breakdowns and breaks here and there. It's kind of a drum loop I got from a sample CD. So um, that's that. But I want to even, you know, make it more interesting. So maybe you can do stuff here with the filter. And the filter goes, uh, of course, down to this, maybe to this frequency. And then we use a random mod. The random mod opens up the filter exactly in a 16-bit note grid. Maybe a bit of smoothing here. So the first problem is you don't want to have this all the time on, right? So you start maybe to use your automation and bring this in and out. Um, but what I, what I do most of the time is using a step mode as a sequencer. So we can say uh, maybe go to eight notes. So this runs pretty slowly, fairly slowly. And then I bring here the frequency up and I say at the end, yeah, I want only to have this effect happening here at the end of these, um, I don't know, two bars, or whatever. So I use the modulation here, bring this down to this position and So you now have you now have this effect only at the end of these two bars happening and then you can start to sequence maybe and switch this on or off depending on where you are in your arrangement so maybe you don't want to have this on every section or every um yeah area of your arrangement happening so you can use automation for that it's much easier this way so um we have your on off so off and maybe we only want to have this here happening at this section. So we have this only here, right? So this is for me much easier to handle. So this is something you can do. Um, then another trick would be to use delay plus. And then you use delay plus. There's a feature at the left side here, which is called fade. And you can increase the update rate. So it updates what's, what's changing on the device. Uh, pretty drastically uh, heavily fast your one kilohertz maybe it's too fast maybe it's uh, maybe you can dial this down but for me it's no drawback to just use a high update rate and then you bring in here maybe the first uh, one bit of delay uh, bring down the feedback here open up the filter mix 100 percent and We have here a freeze button so we can kind of fake and repeat over this so we use a random mod and we modulate here 16 notes we modulate here the beats of delay you can see um that we have no uh pitch in there or no pitch um uh, happening when we, when we change delay times because of this uh, on changes fade and update rate. It's, it's just a beat repeater now. So now we can duplicate here the random mod and can modulate here the uh, forever button or it's, it's freeze button probably. And now another trick is that the modulation amount is actually probability uh, value. Um, and this is this is with all um, binary knobs or switches in Bitwig Studio to say the same case. 
So you can see now it flashes pretty drastically, pretty fast and pretty often. So when you dial this down, maybe to a um, modulation amount of 0 0.514, you can see it's not flashing that often. And maybe it's not flashing at all. Let's see. Ah, now it flashes a bit. But you can decide with the modulation amount the probability of this getting triggered. And the reason for that is that everything in Bitwig over the modulation amount of 0 0.5 is counting as one, as on, switched on, right? And here you can see the modulation values um, change from, let's say, 0 and 1 is here at the top, right? So uh, when we dial in maybe a value here of 0 0.6, um, the modulation amount has to reach maybe 1 to get to 0 0.6. So it's rarely happening that the modulation signal is going over 0 0.5 here. Um, it's probably better for me to, to, to show you this on, um, on, a, on, a, on a graph, but maybe you get it in, together in your head, right? So if I modulate here slightly over 0 0.5, the modulation amount has to rise a lot so it gets here over 0, 0 0.5. So that's basically what you do with the modulation amount. So you can decide here um, by how much you go over 0 0.5, how likely it is for the modulation to trigger this button actually. So I want to have this pretty rarely, maybe a 0 0.6 was uh, pretty nice. So now we have the freeze button sometimes going on and off and let, let's see how this sounds. We go back here. So now we can do stuff like using the step mod here to sequence this and bring the mix in and out at certain points, maybe only at the end from, from the bar. To modulate actually the mix. Maybe you make this a bit slower so we have this every two bars. Okay, so now that we have this, we have maybe the filter here and um, this repeater section, you know, influencing each other too much. So you have this all the time and this sometimes, right? So it gets pretty wild pretty fast. So what we can do now is we, instead of having this here in serial, so one after the other, we can make it in parallel. So we bring this here into... Uh, with the grouping with the control and, and G option into a FX layer. And then you convert this here to an FX selector um, and then bring this here in the second layer. And then you can use a randomize to switch between the two, right? And uh, maybe you can do this pretty slowly or pretty fast. It depends on what kind of sound you're going for. So it's, so it's even possible to switch within the end within the sequencing uh, where we want to put in the effect on the end you can switch between the effects on this and yeah let's see how this works So you have influence on each of these effects differently with the step mod. You can also use the step mod here on the FX selector and bring in all the effects at the same time if you want to. But you can also sequence this here a bit differently. Maybe you want to have here uh, some kind of pulley rhythm happening. So instead of 16 steps, which are basically two bars or one bar, you can go for 14, 14 uh, steps here maybe and then you have like overlapping things and sometimes this happens and only or and sometimes only that sometimes they overlap so you have like um variety in this too 
Okay, so next effect could be, for instance, something like a phaser. Phaser plus here. Let's switch to that so we have this on all the time. And then we use, of course, here randomize to randomize the color. We use a randomize to randomize the algorithm. Okay, and so a step mod, we can sequence this, of course. Maybe here. Bring in the mix. It's down. Lower. We can go back here to the first uh, setting. We have to modulate this again. So now we switch between the three. Okay, so next effect would be something like you want to have a reverb in there, right? But you don't want to have the reverb on all the drums and you want to have it maybe on the snare drum and only on the snare drum sometimes. So by chance, select by chance. So we can do this by adding, of course, a reverb. And we can use here a step mode to bring in the mix, right? Something like this. But because you use the mix knob here, um, the reverb is processing all the time, all the audio coming in. So all the kick drums, all the snare drums, all the hi-hats. And when you bring in the mix here, exactly when the snare hits, you bring also in the reverb tails of the kicks from before, right? So we have to cut out all the drums before the snare comes in. So we only want to have or feed the snare audio signal into the reverb. And we can do this with the grid. So for instance, we can use an FX grid here and we try to analyze the signal inside the grid of the drum loop, right? So let's use a spectrum signal here. You can see the snare drum is happening here at 1K. So what we do is we use a low pass, filter everything away that's below uh, 1K. Use, of course, a very steep filter here. Um, low pass, high pass, everything that's above, everything that's below. And maybe use an XP filter here at 1K. And we use a steep filter like a band pass 4P. This goes away. And you can see we have still a bit of of um of the kick drum in there because there are high um many high contents on top of the kick drum but it's not so much like the snare the snare is still louder at this position here right. so we can still try and figure out here how to get this um Yeah, nice. So we use an, um, a follower here. So we can smooth out the signal and we uh, don't need the spectrum here anymore. This makes no sense there. And we use an oscilloscope to get here. Uh, basically the peak of the snare. So now we can try and get here an uh, gate length. We have the snare here. Nice. Let's see this here with the. It's maybe not perfect, but it, it works in this case. Um, so now that we have this, we can trigger something and we trigger an AD. So 
So the AD itself um, doesn't bring in the mix knob of the reverb here. But we use a tool device. The tool device goes zero. So nothing goes into the reverb because this is zero. You also don't hear anything because the audio didn't pass here through the FX grid because we have this at zero. So what we do now is we use this AD to bring in here the tool device exactly when the snare plays. So only the snare gets feeded in to the reverb. And because we feed this into the tool and don't use the mix knob here, we don't choke the reverb tail because the reverb is always on, always at 100% and the reverb can tail out pretty easily. If we basically do this here without the tool device and bring all the, all the sounds in and just bring this in, The reverb is only as long as our AD is because when we fade this out here, right, the mix goes down and also the reverb tail goes away. Maybe it's exactly what you want, so it's it's not wrong to do it this way. It's all about how you want how you want it to sound, right? So it is it's the only way to think about it. So there's no right or wrong. I only show you possibilities, <laughs> basically. So now that we have this, we need to actually pass here the audio through and the easiest way to do it is, is of course to put this into an FX layer here and put the tool device on there. So we have um, here basically the try signal and this is the wet snare reverb. Okay. So now, now there's only the snare and only reverb on the snare and all the time. So what we can do now is use a chance module here and say, I only want to have this reverb on the snare sometimes. Right, so you get some variety in there uh, with the reverb and you don't need to sequence this actually in the automation or whatever. So um, Bitwig decides here basically with some randomization um, that's something happening at some point in your track. So it makes things more complex, more interesting and um, surprising maybe for yourself too. And you don't need to sequence this actually. Um, of course, if you want to preserve this and to have this every time at the same place, that's a bit different and that's a bit uh, difficult to do. But what you can do actually is to bounce this out to audio, right? And then you have basically a long randomized drum loop with all the effects on it, but it's every time the same. Um, okay, so now that we have this here, yeah, maybe we can make this a bit... Maybe 5 dB quieter. Um, and now that we made this actually, we can just duplicate this and say, instead of using this reverb, I use a delay plus. And because it's randomized, Sometimes this happens and sometimes this happens and sometimes both at the same time happen. So we can dial in here a bit of mix 100% of course. Um,
So, so you get some effects on some of the parts of your track, uh, sometimes, not all the time, and you can use the step mod to sequence stuff in and out and uh, randomize some trigger points here and there. And um, yeah, this all things together make yeah make a huge difference then in the end in the, in the global grand theme of things. Repeater, yeah. Yeah, it's um, fun to do in Bitwig, like I said. And if you save these presets uh, for later, and next time you have a drum loop like this, you just put on some of these devices and um, kind of have fun and have instantaneously more interesting results without going in and editing all the stuff. But sometimes you want to have, you know, at the same position, exactly at this point in time, you want to have this effect. Then you, of course, need to um, need to edit it manually by hand or with automation. But sometimes you just want to make something a bit more interesting, and these effects or these type of workflows can help. Okay. So thanks for watching this video. Leave a like if you find this helpful. Uh, subscribe to the channel, and I see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, and bye.